On July 15, 1971, President Nixon requested time on national TV. The announcement I shall now read is being issued simultaneously in Peking and in the United States. Knowing of President Nixon's expressed desire to visit the People's Republic of China, Premier Cho Enlai, on behalf of the government of the People's Republic of China, has extended an invitation to President Nixon to visit China. The effect was electric. The idea was almost unimaginable. The Washington Post said, if Mr. Nixon had revealed he was going to the moon, he could not have flabbergasted his world audience more. The Cold War was raging. In Southeast Asia, China was North Vietnam's ally, and Richard Nixon's credentials as an anti-communist were longstanding and impeccable. But in the fall of 1967, Nixon wrote a seminal article about Asia after Vietnam. Taking the long view, he wrote, we simply cannot afford to leave China forever outside the family of nations. There is no place on this small planet for a billion of its potentially most able people to live in angry isolation. In January 1969, in his first inaugural address, President Nixon confirmed his determination to change America's policy toward China. We seek an open world a world in which no people, great or small, will live in angry isolation. On February 17, 1972, after two years of secret and delicate negotiations, the President and First Lady were on their way to China. Premier Zhou Enlai was waiting at Beijing. In 1954, the U.S. Secretary of State had snubbed the then Foreign Minister. Nixon wrote in his memoirs, I knew that Joe had been deeply insulted by Foster Dulles's refusal to shake hands with him. When I reached the bottom of the steps, therefore, I made a point of extending my hand as I walked toward him. When our hands met, one era ended and another began. A few hours later, the president met with Chairman Mao Zedong. The 79-year-old leader was in frail health, but the lively hour-long meeting included philosophy, history, and banter. Mao said, I voted for you during your last election. Nixon said, I think the most important thing to note is that in America, at least at this time, those on the right can do what those on the left can only talk about. Throughout his career, Richard Nixon always reserved time for strategic thinking, making and refining extensive notes on yellow pads. In preparation for his China trip, he considered all the possible permutations of policy involved, what they want, what we want, what we both want. At the Great Hall of the People, the President and the Premier exchanged toasts. That in your toast, the Chinese people are a great people. The American people are a great people. We have at times in the past been enemies. We have great differences today. What brings us together is that we have common interests which transcend those differences. At the end of the trip, diplomatic ground was broken with the Shanghai communique. After covering the points on which both sides had reached agreement, they proceeded to detail their different positions on all the other outstanding issues. Nixon referred to this in his final toast to Shanghai on the eve of his departure. That communique will make headlines around the world tomorrow. But what we have said in that communique is not nearly as important as what we will do in the years ahead. We have been here a week. This was the week that changed the world. During a visit to the Great Wall, the president reflected on the purpose and potential of the trip. And one stands there and sees the, the wall going to the peak of this mountain. And I think that you would have to conclude that this is a great wall and that it had to be built by a great people. I think one of the results of our trip, we hope, may be that uh, the walls that are erected, uh, whether they are physical walls like this or whether they are other walls, uh, ideology or philosophy, uh, will not divide peoples in the world. Uh, that peoples, regardless of their differences in backgrounds and their philosophies, will have an opportunity to communicate with each, with each other, to know each other, uh, and to share with each other uh, those particular endeavors that 
will mean peaceful progress in the years ahead. Well, goodbye. After President Nixon returned home, playwright, congresswoman, and ambassador Claire Booth Luce told him that a thousand years from now they will say of you, he went to China. And it began 50 years ago this week, with a week that changed the world.